Previously on Backup Power Project. Either of these makes a great improvement to the backup power system. This Viking is going to go on my water pump system. This one is going to go on my laundry room furnace system. This red one staying in the garage for general use. Very short money, very, very big improvement. As nice as those two battery charger maintainers are, there are no match for this $15 off-grid solar charger. What's the difference? Solar charger maintainers stay on during a power failure. All you need to keep working is a single 100 watt panel like this one and sunlight. Now, the biggest problem with every new project is indecision. What do I need? What's this going to cost? How long is it going to take? Will it be worth it? Well, here's a list of everything you need to get started. The project costs about $200. You can easily install it in a single afternoon. Keyword, easily. There are no tall ladders involved. You don't have to get up on the roof. And yes, it's definitely worth it. Wish you had step-by-step -step instructions with pictures? Here they are. Let's get started. Disconnect whatever you've been using to charge the battery and replace it with a fused battery to charge controller cable. The battery cable is always the first cable on in any solar project and the last cable off. So this is your first step. Now this cable came with a 15 amp fuse. Change it if necessary to match the amp rating of the charge controller you plan to use. The controller I bought is rated 30 amps. So that's what I changed the fuse to. Proper fuse protection is very important. If you don't already have one, consider keeping an inexpensive assortment like this on hand. The wire gauge of all cables should match the size of the charge controller's battery terminals, which in most cases is 10 AWG. Now, you can use thinner, cheaper cables, but it's best to max all cables now so that you don't have to rewire later should you decide to add more panels. Length of the battery cable would typically be about six feet. If necessary, extend it with something like this. The extension should have an SAE connector on one end, stripped and tinned wires on the other end. Important tip. Very little insulation has been removed from the controller end of the extension. Don't be tempted to strip off more. That little bit is exactly the right amount. Now, you want the controller mounted at eye level, roughly the same height as a house thermostat. Mount it with two small screws. Use whatever screws and screwdriver you've got. It's not important. But it is important to use an eighth inch, also known as number zero, flathead screwdriver to secure the battery cable. A lot of people complain that they have trouble attaching charge controller cables. That's because they're using the wrong screwdriver. Here's a list of screwdrivers I own that fit every charge controller I've tried perfectly. Next comes the fused controller to sidewall cable. That should also be 10 AWG. Measure this distance carefully. Mine is about six feet long. The fuse in this cable will vary depending on the number of panels connected to the system and whether or not the fuse holder is located indoors or out. Now an interesting question. Why are outdoor fuses rated higher than indoor fuses? 
Solar radiation causes roof-mounted fuses to heat up and blow prematurely. To avoid the expense and trouble of having to go up on a hot roof and change them, it's common to overrate solar panel fuses by 50%. Well, our fuses are indoors, and our panels are not on the roof, so we can use a value much closer to reality. As previously demonstrated, each 100-watt Thunderbolt panel puts out a little over 6 amps max. Okay, this one's the Harbor Freight panel. Try to get it exactly perpendicular. Press the hold button. 5.52 amps. The closest standard size to that is 7.5 amps. So that's the fuse to start a single panel installation with. As you add panels, change the fuse accordingly. Next comes the sidewall connector. The infamous sidewall connector. Note that the one shown here causes a reverse polarity error. When it's used with Thunderbolt 100 watt panels, it connects the black wire to red and the red wire to black. I've shown this before. Watch. So here's the plug. We've got red all the way through, red to red. Notice that the hot wire, the red wire, is on the female side of the connector. So let's go into this one. Female side is right here. When we plug it in, what just happened? We reversed polarity. We now have red on the black. We have black on the red. Well, that's okay. The other one has got to be right. All right, let's plug into this one. What just happened? They're both wrong. Black is on the red. Red is on the black. How can that be? Because it's not whether the red is on the top or the bottom. It's where, whether it's on the female socket or not. And you'll see that both of these, even though they're upside down from each other, both of these have red expecting the male pin. Both of them. And the system requires that red accept the female pin. So both of these cause you to have a reverse polarity error that you have to correct. Correct it with one of these adapters. Most likely you won't have to buy one. They're often included with SAE cables without any explanation as to what they're used for. So, as not to drill into a floor joist, I measured from the outdoor faucet and chose a wide open spot on the band joist. Use a one inch spade bit to drill the hole. Don't have one? This is what they look like. Here's an outside view of my sidewall connector. Laying on the ground is an optional four-way SAE splitter. By the way, SAE stands for Society of Automotive Engineers. Just a tidbit. With one of those, you can easily add up to three more panels to the system. Keyword again is easily. Everything in this upgrade is plug and play. Now, measure from the sidewall connector to the solar panel. You may or may not need an extension here. Typically, extensions are sold in pairs. I need it about six feet. Every install is different. Here's a list of the hardware I used to hang the solar panel. The kit costs about $15, and you can get most of it at Ace Hardware. Start by measuring the pre-drilled holes in your solar panel frame. Mark that distance and screw two row hooks into the fascia board above the panel location. Below that comes a pair of plant hanger S-hooks. 
The S-hooks I used are 18 inches long, but they come in all lengths. The quarter by two eye bolts attached to the pre-drilled holes opposite the kickstands in the panel frame. You want the kickstands at the bottom. Be careful when installing the eye bolts. Use extra nuts and washers to keep the threaded nuts as far away from the panel as possible. I also used wing nuts on the back to facilitate installation. Now extend the kickstands all the way out for summer. Retract them by one shingle or so for winter. Use a zip tie to secure the solar panel to the frame. The zip tie relieves stress on the panel's built-in connectors. Now, if you read the materials list, I bet you're wondering what the bungee cord is for. When really bad weather is predicted, when the weather channels are talking about hurricane force winds and one to two feet of heavy wet snow, that would be roughly a 120 pound snow load on the panel. It only takes seconds to collapse the kickstands and secure the panel tight against the house like this. Alternately, it only takes a minute to unplug the panel, unhook it, and bring it inside. No special tools are needed to install this upgrade. It doesn't take much. In most cases, whatever you have now will work. You don't need an extension ladder. You don't have to go up on the roof. All you need is a sturdy step stool. How well does the solar upgrade work? Better than my wildest expectations. It's no toy. And it's comforting to know that if we had to go off grid, we could. Can you see four panels across the front of that house? It's easily done for very little money. So I hope these step-by-step -step instructions help someone. If you have a question, feel free to ask it. Otherwise, please like and subscribe as it really helps the channel. Good luck. Thanks for watching.